into the world of amazing animal colors. Doing some decorating, huh, Henry? Yeah, I need a change from white. I know what you mean. Being happy in your home environment is really important, and there's no better way to make sure it's a home that you like than by painting it your favorite colors. So what colors are you going to use? Well, I thought purple and green. Yuck, Henry, you have no taste. Well, I'm working with you. Go figure. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe you'd get better results if you used one of these. Great! A merry-go-round! It's a color wheel. It helps show which colors go together best. Cool! Oh, I'll make it stop! Well, if you insist... Well, that's one way to decorate. Maybe you should take a tip from the colorful world of animals, Henry. Cool! A rainbow! Rainbows show all the colors we see in the world. But really all they are is light passing through raindrops. Never mind that. Lead me to the pot of gold! That's just an old story, Henry. You're supposed to be concentrating on the colors. Uh, it gives me a headache. There must be millions of them. Well, actually, there are only seven primary colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. All the others are just different shades of those seven. But how am I ever going to choose? Well, you could just check them out one by one. Or maybe some of the animals can help you see which colors go together best. Okay. There's nowhere better to see every color under the sun and in every combination than on a coral reef. Corals are really tiny animals that live in colonies. Together, they construct these huge underwater reefs. Amazing! It's like an underwater garden! And just like in a garden, the colors are made by plants. Plants? But you said corals were animals! They are, but they share their body with tiny plants called algae. Excuse me, they share their bodies? Uh, invasion of the body snatchers! No, Henry. The plants actually feed the coral and provide all its color. Without them, the coral would die. Now that's a good strong red. Yeah, nice and bright. You see a lot of reds in nature, like that monarch butterfly. Wow, beautiful. Isn't it? But don't forget, red is also the color for danger. I knew that. If you know so much, then you won't need me to tell you that your ladder is about to fall over. What? Are you okay? I think so. But what have I done to that pigeon? Actually, it's a bleeding heart dove. Did you say bleeding heart? Out of my way! What are you doing? We gotta get that dove to the ER right now! Oh, Henry. Henry, he's not really bleeding. It's just a patch of color that makes it look like he's bleeding. Like the false eyes on the tails of some fish, these red color patches are there to confuse predators. They confused me. Red is often used by animals to say, look out, I'm dangerous. What? Is that what those little guys are saying? Yep. Poison dart frogs produce one of the most deadly poisons in the animal kingdom. It's a good thing that they do give a warning. Right! Red for danger! A bright red color nearly always means, look at me, 
but it isn't always a danger sign. Check out these frigate birds. Whoa! He's all pumped up! That's his display. Male frigate birds puff their red throat sacks out like that to attract females. Yeah, right. Very attractive. The orange-red feathers of the cock of the rock are great for making a display in the forests where they live. The males dance together while the females watch. The females aren't as colorful, but then all they have to do is to choose their favorite male. I bet she chooses me. I'm everyone's favorite male. She'll choose the male with the best and brightest display. That's because she wants her chicks to be the best and brightest. Yeah, like my mom. She wanted me to be the best and brightest, too. Boy, did she get lucky. Henry, you're the most conceited lizard I've ever met. <laughs> Let's see how cocky you are about your report. Report? What report? Henry, it's time for your report. Henry, it's time for your special report. What? Now? Yes, Henry, now. Oh. You are ready, aren't you? Uh, of course I am. What was it about again? You're supposed to be telling us all about albino animals. Oh, right. <sighs> Here goes! Okay, so, uh, albino animals are ones that have no color in their bodies at all. They just end up looking white with pink eyes and stuff. How am I doing so far? I don't believe it, Henry. You've actually been doing your homework. Uh, yeah! Sure I have! Okay, so one animal that is always albino is the ax... Uh, axanthrottle. Oh, no. Uh, axolotl! Yeah, that's it! The axolotl! A Mexican salamander with weird sticking up plant-like gills. Hmm. Aren't you going to tell us why they're albino? Okay, okay, keep your hair on! Sheesh! Now, the reason the axolotl is albino, or white, is because of pirates! Excuse me? Pirates? Yeah, pirates! Now, will you stop interrupting? Right! Once upon a time, all axolotls were blue, you see. And there was this one very famous ruthless pirate called Bluebeard who liked to keep axolotls as pets because they matched the color of his beard. But then one day, there was a fierce battle and Bluebeard was killed. The axolotls all escaped and swam off to the beach to catch some rays and live happily ever after. And? And? Oh, uh, right. Uh, but before they even started to tan, they saw a strange white figure wandering through the surf. When the axolotls looked closer, they realized to their horror that it was the ghost of Bluebeard. At that moment, their gills stood on end, and they went white as a sheet, and they've been that way ever since. And that's why axolotls are albino, and that's straight from the lizard's mouth. Whew. So, do I get an A or what? That wasn't even worth an or what, Henry. Ghosts. Come on. Didn't I even get one bit right? Not even one, Henry. Rats. For one thing, they've never been blue. And for another, not all axolotls are white. Oh. Those axolotls that are albino are born white because their skin has no pigment or color. The usual color for axolotls is dark brown. Albinos just missed out on getting any of that brown color. Now, axolotls are really baby salamanders. They should lose their gills, come out of the water and live on land. But they never do, and they never grow up. They stay kids all their life? Cool. Yeah, like somebody else I know. Say, Henry, how do you tell a true albino from an animal that is naturally white? Ask for their ID? <laughs> no, just look for pink eyes. Like that snake? So he must be albino. Correct. <laughs>
Yay! Wait a minute, his eyes are blue. This ring-tailed lemur isn't actually a true albino. He has a white coat, but he also has dark stripes and those blue eyes. At least he has some color. But being mostly white still gives him one big problem. It's easy for predators to spot him in the forest. He can still play and have a good time, but it does mean that he can never go too far from his mom. <laughs> Poor guy. Hey, yellow, that's a nice sunny color. Yeah, but I'm improving on it. How can you improve on it? Well, I thought I'd combine it with some big old blobs of brown. See what I mean? Hmm. I guess it does make a neat pattern. Yeah, excellent. Reminds me of something. Can't think of what, though. Hmm, I think I know. Huh? Ah, a leopard! Now I know what that pattern reminded me of. But Henry, you didn't finish yet. You finish it. I'm out of here! It's not surprising you didn't see the leopard, though, Henry. Its spots are perfect camouflage in the hazy African sun. They help break up its outline, so it looks like dappled patches of light and shadow. And it means they can sneak up on their prey virtually unseen. Sneak is right! Any sneakier, and they'd be cheaters! Cheetahs? Get it? Leopard? Cheater? They'd be cheating? Of course, no matter how hard they try, they're always spotted. Uh, I do the gags on this show, okay? Giraffes are very well camouflaged against the trees and bushes. Yeah, well, except... Except what? Except they're about 17 feet tall. So why bother? I mean, what are they hiding from? A 40-foot Doberman? What's the point? I see what you mean, Henry. But you've got to remember that their babies are much smaller and much more vulnerable. Oh, yeah. I guess so. Hey, Mom, don't push. Giraffe calves need camouflage when they're young. It helps them hide when there's nobody about to look after them. Of course, they're pretty safe when mom and dad are around. Safe, yeah. But you can't have much fun with your parents looking over your shoulder all the time. And boy, can these parents really look over their shoulders. Come on, Henry. What do you have against them? Giraffe parents just take their jobs seriously. If they're so serious, how come they're sitting down on the job, huh? <laughs> what are you doing, Henry? Don't distract me. I'm spraying it all blue. Uh, no, you're not, Henry. Of course I am! Hey, what's going on? You mix the blue with yellow, and that makes green. It does? Excuse me, but that's amazing! Ah! Henry, where are you? I can't see you! I can't see me either! What's happened? Ah, because you're green, you're actually camouflaged against the green background. Really? Wow! Oh! I can't see where I'm going! Do something! Okay, Henry. Thanks. That was weird. Where did they come from? They were camouflaged just like you. Cool! Fellow green guys! 
What do you say we go get a soda and talk about some green issues and stuff? You know, did I tell you that green was my favorite color? Green seems to be nature's favorite color. Almost all plants and trees are green. Many of the animals that shelter in them are green too. Especially the ones that don't want to get eaten, like lizards. That's right. All kinds of animals are green so they don't get noticed by predators. But amazingly, there are very few green mammals. What is that? That, Henry, is a sloth, a very strange green mammal. Boy, is he having a bad hair day. Actually, that's what it looks like every day. The fact that his hair is so messy is one of the reasons that algae can grow on it. Excuse me, did you say algae grows on it? That's right, Henry. The sloth moves so slowly and lives in such a humid, sweaty place that his long, messy fur is the perfect place for algae to grow. Amazing! Does it grow inside his body like with the coral? No, just on the outside. It's what makes his fur that green color. So, personal grooming and hygiene don't play a big part in this guy's life. Well, at least he does take a bath sometimes. What am I supposed to be looking at here? Can't you see the fish and the seaweed? Ah, okay. So this fish is green because it lives in water? It's because it hides in the seaweed. The kelp is the same sort of green as the fish. That's why it's called a kelp fish. Someone sure had some sleepless nights thinking up that one. I think it really suits him. There may be lots of other fish that live in the kelp, but most of them are bigger and feistier. They don't need to hide in the weed, but the kelp fish relies on it. They've probably all got real sensible names, too. Orange fish, right? Garibaldi's, Henry. Maybe kelp fish isn't such a dumb name after all. for a Henry's Amazing Golden Gecko Awards. The prize winners for the all-time best animal colors are... In third place is the Frigate Bird, the amazing seabird that blows up like a football every time he sees a girl go by. In second place is the Chameleon. This is the real quick-change master. They change their skin color more often than some people change their socks. But the winner of the Golden Gecko Award for the all-time best animal color is the Hummingbird! The smallest, fastest flapping, and definitely the brightest and most colorful bird in the world! Hummingbirds have been called the jewels of the forest. It's partly because of their tiny size. Some aren't much bigger than bumblebees, but it's mostly because their colors seem to glitter just like jewels. Me, I think they kind of look like new cars. New cars? Yeah, you know, with the metallic paint job. Of course, some hummingbirds aren't always as sparkly as others. Some aren't sparkly at all. Where's all the color gone? It isn't really gone. It's just that their colors are iridescent. Iridescent? Iridescent. It means that the colors we see are made by light passing through the tiny feathers. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? The colors change and shimmer as the hummingbird and its feathers move and as the light hits the feathers at different angles. Ah, so it's kind of like light that sets the colors free. That's right, Henry. And that's why hummingbirds aren't very colorful if it's cloudy or at nighttime. You can't see their colors at night? Now there's a surprise. Give me a break, Henry. Okay. Hummingbirds and their amazing iridescent colors. The all-time best animal colors in a bright light. What's going on here? Well, I figured if I mixed all the amazing colors together, I'd make rainbow paint. I don't think it works that way, Henry. We'll see. Look, when you mix all the colors together, you don't get a rainbow. All you get is a mess. You do? Yes. 
Or maybe it just needs a bit more power. Be careful, Henry. Relax. What can happen? Uh-oh. What a mess. Whoa. That's no mess. That's art. I don't think so. Philistine, it's a masterpiece. A pulsating combination of contrasting black and white. Uh, uh, Blobs and squiggles? Oh, all right already. Look, I may not know much about art, but I sure know what I like. Well, I guess it does show that not everything has to be brightly colored to be, um, beautiful. Exactly. I suppose there are a whole bunch of amazing animals that benefit from having a black and white coat. I guess the king of the world of black and white has to be the zebra. It's thought that those stripes actually serve a very vital purpose. Yeah, they save on decorating bills. If you have enough stripy friends around, who needs wallpaper? <laughs> no, Henry. No two zebras have the same pattern. So the stripes are kind of like human fingerprints? Precisely, which means that they could use their stripes to tell who's who. But that's not all. Hey, I know. The stripes are supposed to hide them from lions who can't see where one zebra starts and another one ends. Pretty good, Henry. That's certainly one way having black and white stripes could help them. But some people reckon that they have even more uses. Stripes could protect them from the blood-sucking tsetse fly. This little fly carries the dreaded sleeping sickness disease, but it's thought that they have problems seeing black and white. That could make the zebra practically invisible to the tiny pest. Yeah, and if they do come too close, then the zebra has one last line of defense. A handy fly swatter! Yikes! Skunk! It's actually a zorilla, Henry. But that black and white coat isn't lying. It is a relative of the skunk, and it can cause a big stink, too. Hey, you! <laughs> oh, run away! You can bet that when its neighbors see those colors, they'll react exactly the same as you. Look out, guys! It's gas mask time! So, Henry, have all those animal colors given you any ideas for your decorating? They sure have, especially the amazing colors of hummingbirds. But those colors are made by light, not paint. Yeah, I know. Hit it, guys! 